Welcome to Ladies of Another Got View. Got a view on back. back. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. We, um, we have no visuals. So we, we, might... we can't see the screen right. But we're going to just keep moving on because, boy, do we have an exciting show today. Uh, I'm here, Patty, with Mary. And Hello. we have a very special guest today, the man, the legend, Bill Sorensen. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to this. Absolutely. Absolutely. Welcome. Welcome to the show. Um, a lot of people know Bill because he was once the mayor for three terms of Bismarck. He also is a legend of Medora, but he, he before we go any further, we have another special guest. I would like to welcome Virgil Hill, world boxing, boxing champion. He won a silver medal in the 1984 Olympics. He was inducted into the Boxing Hall of Fame, and he also has five world titles. Welcome to the show, Virgil. Thank you, thank you. Hi, Bill. <laughs> Virgil, I would have never agreed to be on the show if I had known they were going to connect with you. You know that, don't you? <laughs> I said the same thing. <laughs> you have to tell me everything. I see, I see, I see. So what is your connection with Virgil? Well, we go back ways, you know. Um, if you want the whole story, uh, now, and Virgil, you can jump in and any time and, and correct anything that I tell him as I tell him the story. My, sto my involvement with Virgil Hill, but I won a trip to the Olympics way back when, a sales trip, when wow. Virgil was there. And I was kind of a track and a field fan, but I, uh, I traded some tickets to go watch the, a boxing event, and Virgil was there, and he comes in the ring with the North Dakota flag, and I was just all caught up, all caught up in all the hoopla, and... Uh, he won, and I, I go back to come back to Bismarck, and uh, he's going to fight for the gold medal on TV. And I can't wait to have people over to my house. We're watching this event. That was the time the Koreans had threatened to pull out of the Olympics because of boxing judging. And Virgil has this as the first match after that, Virgil Hill versus a Korean. Virgil Hill clearly wins all three rounds in the Olympics, and uh, the decision goes to the Korean. Oh, boy. And uh, Howard Cosell was uh, going berserk. Do you remember that, Virgil? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> a long time ago. Yeah, it was a long time ago, but Howard Cosell is going, going berserk and just saying, this is an injustice, this is a travesty of the worst kind, da-da-da-da, going and on. But he puts the mic in front of Virgil, and Virgil, as close as I can remember, your words were this. He said, he said to Virgil, will there be a protest? And Virgil said, that's not a decision I will make. Uh, I was just happy to have had the opportunity to represent the United States in my home state of North Dakota. Congratulations to the winner. I, I performed to the best of my ability. I hope I didn't disappoint anybody. And I was home in my living room going, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I know. Wow. He was so humble. I mean, Virgil, you were so humble during that time. I remember as well because we're about the same age. But I just remember that North Dakota flag and how proud you were to represent North Dakota yeah. and the United States of America. It was a big deal for North fun. Dakota. It and was fun. So proud of you. Yeah, I've been thinking about it watching the Olympics now, now recently. I was remembering that that time. But anyway. And I, so how did you connect yeah, with Yeah, so I, I just decided, you know, that was so classy. I decided to put together a little reception for him when he came back. A couple days later, as I recall, Virgil, he flew back into Bismarck. So on the spur of the moment, we had a luncheon. That was then the Ramcota. And it was tremendously successful. I mean, several hundred people showed up to to say thank you to Virgil. And at that event, he said, well, unfortunately, now uh, that I'm going pro, I won't be able to uh, box in North Dakota because we don't have a boxing commission. And as, as fate would have it, I was sat on the table kind of at the back, and across the, the table from me was Ben Meyer, then Secretary of State, who also carries the title of athletic commissioner. So I leaned over to him and said, Ben, that's too bad. We, we don't have any other professional sports at that time. We didn't have the Bucks or the Larks or the Wizards, which I had, or any of those things at the time. I said, we should, we should have a boxing commission. And Ben Meyer said, you're the promoter guy, Bill. You go ahead and start it. So I said, I will. And so I started the first boxing commission. Uh, probably the only got boxing commissioner ever that didn't know anything about boxing. Uh, but, but we started the commission, and then I got off of it so I could promote. And we uh, ended up helping to putting together an event for Virgil. And that was the start of it for us. And Virgil, I saw your last event. I think you were 50 or 51, right, for your last fight. And I saw yeah. you at a press conference thanking Bill Sorensen that he really made a big difference in your career. How, yeah, how did he help you? Have, I most likely wouldn't have had a career if it wasn't for Bill. Wow. And the fact that he didn't know anything about boxing. <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> he introduced me. I think he, I think he said one of the awards. I don't know if it was, he was bo co boxer of the year. It was the event I couldn't be at. I know because I was in Medora, but uh, I, you probably remember Virgil. But I think he said some nice words about me and said I might be the only only promoter, only manager in the sport of boxing that doesn't like the sport. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is pretty remarkable. But um, maybe maybe that was good, right, Virgil? Because he didn't know what the limits were. He thought anything was possible, right? Oh, absolutely. Um, so, tell um, us about your yeah. early times. Oh, I, I, no different than any regular North Dakota kid growing up in uh, Grand Forks, North Dakota and stuff. Um, you know, I played football, I wrestled, I ran track. Um, in the summertime, we played baseball. Um, so no different than anything that the, uh, uh, you know, kids do in, in North Dakota. Um, maybe uh, I was fortunate, though, that uh, I had, you know, my, my parents were very uh, supportive. Uh, my brothers and sisters and stuff uh, were very supportive and stuff. So I always had, I always had that. And... Uh, loving family and everything. So it was, it was, it was a wonderful time. I, um, yeah, I, nothing special. It just, uh, well, Virgil, how did you get into boxing though? Cause that's not a school uh, sport. How did you get into boxing? I saw bar. We lived in Reynolds, North Dakota on a, on a, uh, one of the farm ranches and stuff. And so, you know, part of our, part of our, um, uh, I guess, I just threw my dad. Part of our payment was to feed cattle and stuff like that. And so I saw boxing on TV. It was uh, Golden Glove boxing. And I said, if we ever move to a city, now for me, I live in Southern California now. Now a city to me in from North Dakota is forty five thousand people. I mean, coming from Grand Forks, that was a big city. Fargo being the biggest city, of course. Um, and he came home from work one day and he said. And by that time, we moved into Grand Forks. And he said, do you want to steal in a box? And I said, yeah. And he took me down to the local gym. And I started boxing. Uh, I was eight years old. I had my first amateur fight then. I lost to a guy from Fergus Falls, Minnesota. <laughs> this guy came out, and he had a robe, shorts, and boxing boots. I knew he was tough. <laughs> <laughs> you were tough yeah and i had a pair of uh white shorts that my mother went and and painted a butterfly and a bee on <laughs> 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 and a pair of, and a pair of, i don't know if it was chucks uh you know the height uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> sneakers or what it was and stuff Converse, and, yeah. and yeah i lost my lost my first one and um then i went on to win um uh, my record, my amateur record was 288 and 11. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, amazing. And how many titles have you won? Was it five world titles? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Bill and, I, uh, Bill and I won five world titles. That is amazing. Um, Virgil, oh, go ahead. Instrumental in getting me into the Hall of Fame because mm -hmm. I couldn't remember all that stuff. So, um, yeah, so we got into the Hall of Fame stuff, so it was it was a good time. Yeah. I, I should tell our audience, you had a five-minute warning. Bill had your phone number. I said, let's get Virgil on because we're going to talk about it. Thank you for joining us so last minute. <laughs> Thank you very much, Bill. I love you. And don't be, don't be saying jokes about me, man, because I'm still good. <laughs> I got, I'll have the mic after you're off, buddy. I'll have the mic after you're hey, off. I'll tell them the real story. Can, can you stay on a little bit longer? You have such a fan base in North Dakota. Can you stay on and talk a little bit more after the commercials? Absolutely. Do you have the time? Okay, yeah, all right. Perfect. We're going to take a break right now. We'll be right back with Bill Sorensen and Virgil Hill after these messages with Ladies of Another View on deck. He's such a good guy. Respect, innovation, trust, and excellence. These core values can be seen in every building built by Straightway Construction. In the community for over 15 years, Straightway Construction has become the premier construction company for commercial projects. From dirt to design and framing to finish, Straightway Construction is your number one choice. You won't have to look far to find a project that has that Straightway touch. Call them today or go online to straightwayconstruction.com and let them make your vision a reality.
I'm Rick Becker from No Apologies. Welcome to your After Hours Oasis of Sanity. Watch us weeknights at 9 Central on Beck News and online at beck.news. Hi, I'm Dennis Haugen, along with my sons Andy and Mike, and we're showing our support for wind energy in North Dakota. Wind energy has provided farmers like us with a steady stream of income that's not tied to the weather, like crops and cattle are. Another bonus is that wind farm owners are required to maintain the roads leading up to the turbines. Because of that, oftentimes these roads are the best in the county. Wind energy is good for landowners, it's good for the land, it's good for our economy, and it's good for North Dakota. Hey everybody, I'm Doug Billings, your host of The Right Side with Doug Billings on Beck News. We bring you high profile guests, ladies and gentlemen, exclusive guests. Now, you're not gonna see these guests in most of the mainstream media outlets. Another thing that I do here is give guests a platform to speak freely. You're not gonna see me censor anybody. Please join us, won't you? Weeknights right here on Beck TV and online at beck.news. Cheers. Pub 21, your one stop for fun, drinks, and food. Our spacious facility provides COVID safe fun for you and all your friends. With nightly bingo and specials, you can be sure there's something to do for everyone. If you're staying in for the night, we've got you covered just across the way with Pub 21 Liquor. We have a wide variety of options from wine to whiskey and everything in between. Stop in today at 1014 South 12th Street in Bismarck to see what all the buzz is about. You won't be disappointed. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. Welcome back to Ladies of Another View on Back, and we are once again joined with Bill Sorensen, who is a legend in Medora and in Bismarck as the mayor, but he is also known as the manager of another legend, <laughs> Boxing Hall of Famer Virgil Hill. Welcome back. Thank um, you. And I'm wondering, so Bill knows nothing about boxing, doesn't even like it, he becomes your manager. How did that work out? <laughs> Very well, since he was a politician. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Don King absolutely did not like him. Oh, oh my gosh. No, because he couldn't buy Bill. Wow. He couldn't buy Bill. He couldn't, you know, all of his trickery and stuff like that. Bill always had an answer for it and stuff. Um, you know, I was very, very fortunate to have someone like him uh, to... Uh, to manage my career for as long as he does, has and still has, you know, he still to this day, I'm 57 years old and I'm calling him for tips and this and that. And they asking me how I'm doing and uh, still worries about me and stuff. And, and so, but I want to say one thing, I want to say that I, I did get a gold medal out of the 84 Olympics cause I got my wife there. Aww. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, uh, good line, Virgil. Wow. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> she had a gold medal, so yeah. <laughs> and so was she an athlete there? or Unbelievable uh, athlete. Field. Back and field. Okay. So, de so Deneen, let, let me brag about it real quick. Deneen actually won four, was in four different Olympics. That she qualified for four different Olympics as a sprinter, which is unheard of. And, and also... To me, uh, an amazing fact that she and her three sisters, when Deneen was the youngest, when they were in high school, they set the, the world record for mile relay as, wow. as four sisters. Wow. As a, cool. For high school time. That yeah. is so cool. Pretty, I pretty did not amazing. know that. Yeah. Pretty amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Yes, I got my little slice of gold anyway. Yay. That <laughs> well, is so sweet. So yeah. what state was she from? She claims Alaska, but I said, I don't know if there's any black people in Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody's really from Alaska. <laughs> yeah, she's originally from Texas, but we, uh, we live in California, obviously. Yeah. Wonderful. 
And how is it that you were fit enough at 51 to have your last fight, which was at the Bismarck Event Center? Who boxes at 51? Hopefully nobody. <laughs> 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 no, nobody. It was the hardest thing I ever did. And the only reason why I did it was because I was in a bad car accident. And, and the doctor came in and said, well, you know, uh, your, your career's over and you're retired. And I was so mad that uh, I started, you know, a few weeks after that. And uh, he got me in shape. It took me four years, four years. And Bill was deathly against this fight. And I said, Bill, I got to do it. Just just to say goodbye to North Dakota and, and uh, you know, close, close everything. And then we trained hard for four years and, and um, and came to Bismarck, and we had a great time. We had <laughs> over 6,000 people there and stuff, and we stood out there and signed autographs for four hours. It was just a wonderful time. And, and, I, and I told him one of the deals we had at the beginning is, is uh, when I started managing his career was that I got to decide when we were done. Oh. And so after uh, he took a couple punches, I said, okay, we're, we're going to retire. And, uh, and so I was, I was opposed to this comeback. But he was so proud of the day that he came in and he was just ripped at 51. Yeah. You know, he was just ripped and he looked at me and says, I told you so, I told oh. you so. So, <laughs> so I told him I'd get involved and help promote the last day. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was a one, it was a wonderful time. It was a good, it was a good stretch. And it brought yeah. me back from, you know, from depression and stuff like that. It gave me an opportunity to say goodbye to all the people that ever, you know, Give me an, uh, an opportunity and a chance, and to say thank you from from the bottom of my heart from North Dakota, because they were my loyal fans for almost thirty years. Okay, Virgil, I'm going to ask you a question that I'm curious about. This, this will be this will be a surprise to to you. And this. you told me at one time when I turned you down for being your manager way back when. We haven't talked about this, but you mm -hmm. told me. If you're not going to manage me, I'm done boxing. And, I, and that's when I said, okay, I'll do one event. And we had a one, fight, one event contract for 15 years after that. Oh, my gosh. But would you really quit? Or were you just Absolutely bluffing me? Absolutely, I would have. And then I would have told everybody that it was your fault. That I <laughs> <laughs> I blackmailed them. Yeah. Well, it worked. It yeah, worked. It worked. Yeah. yeah, it worked out. It was all in the business. It's all boxing is kind of a shitty business there. <laughs> so who's the politician? Who's yeah. politicking yeah. who? Yeah. <laughs> that guy's the politician. He's the poker yeah, player. Yeah. 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 He, yeah, he's... yeah. Maybe that's what it is. A poker po player versus a politician. Yeah. The poker player yeah, won. He, what yeah, a team. Yeah. But I'll tell you, the, my my love for him is 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 more than you could ever believe for from one person to another. He was. <laughs> He was uh, instrumental in getting me into the Hall of Fame and winning, you know, four or five, five titles. Uh, he was just, Bill was unbelievable for a guy that never didn't know boxing and he dealt with all the biggest names in boxing and, he, and, and fairly and justly, you know, he was just a fair guy. So Virgil, I'm just going to say this. Um, I can see how humble you are, where here you are the star, but yet you're giving all the glory and the goodness to him. And it's like, that is, your North Dakota roots are showing, basically. It's that North Dakota nice, and you're so humble, and such a, just, we can just feel it through this screen here that um, I don't even, I'm almost speechless because of, of your humbleness and your love of North Dakota. Let, let me tell you one Virgil Hill story real quick. I've got, in this short of time, I want to do it. The biggest event ever in the sports, in boxing, is in, in Munich, Germany. Virgil's fighting the guy by the Henry Mask. We're having a press conference. It goes on and on and on. His trainer says to me, Bill, we need to go to get Virgil's workout in. Uh, so I go up and tell the guy we can only take one more question for Virgil. When I sit back down, the trainer says, this is the first time Virgil has not gotten his North Dakota plug in. I said, you're right. So the last question they came to Virgil Hill that was given to an interpreter, the guy says, You've had a longevity in the sport of boxing. Most champions defend their title three times. You've now had 14 or 15 at that time. What do you attribute your longevity? And he said, that's easy. It's because of where I come from in the state of North Dakota. No one, wow. no one cares what you did yesterday. Everybody cares what you do today. And every day you put your boots on and get up and go to work. 
and I'm very happy and proud that I, that I grew up with that work ethic and it's carried me to this point in my sport. And once again, I'm over there going, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. What yeah. a very team. Very classy, very classy. What a team you two were. What, well, what a duo. And you know, North Dakota loves you. We love you. Thank you, Virgil, for sharing uh, and being on the show with Bill. I, I, I feel honored that you two are together on, on the show. Fun for me. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think you should come back and run for Bill. You got to see his magic act. It's unbelievable. We're going to. We are. We are. He's got some magic trips up, up, Check up his sleeve. Check your pockets before he leaves, though. <laughs> no. <laughs> he never goes anywhere without a deck of cards, so we're going to see some magic from Bill later on. Thank you, Vir Vir uh, Virgil, for joining us, and we'll have to have your wife on sometime. Amen. All right. Yeah, you take so, care. Okay. Thanks, Bye, Bye, Bill. Bye, I love you. Bye. Love you, too. We'll be right back with Ladies of Another View on back. That's fun. Yep. <laughs> Got me too. Jeez, what a mess. Look at that. There's roof stuff everywhere. It's so embarrassing. Ruins the neighborhood. Come on, humans. Let's get this fixed. Don't let your roof go to the dogs. Call America's best contractors for your free estimate. Need a new woof? After checking with the rest, go with the best. America's Best Contractors, 258-2412. Online at americasbestcontractorsincorporated.com. Go for launch, 2018 series Mike Lindell, and I'm coming to you with the most important commercial that I've ever done. All of you know what my pillow and myself have gone through in the last five months in my efforts to bring the truth forward. Well, it's all come down to this. I'm having a cyber symposium on August 10th, 11th, and 12th. This historical event will be live streamed 72 hours straight on my new platform, frankspeech.com. You can help by getting everybody you know to go to frankspeech.com now. To help support this cyber symposium event, I am offering some of the best prices ever on my pillow products, but they're only offered at frankspeech.com. Go to frankspeech.com now and use the promo code on your screen or call the 1-800 number below to receive these exclusive my pillow offers. Thank you and God bless. Ever been in a cave before? It's our first time. All right. Where are you going? I'll see you at the car! But how will we... The car! Your offer has been accepted. Ever bought a house before? It's our first time. All right. Where are you going? I'll see you at the closing! But how will we... The closing! Hey everybody, I'm Doug Billings, your host of The Right Side with Doug Billings on Beck News. We bring you high profile guests, ladies and gentlemen, exclusive guests. Now, you're not gonna see these guests in most of the mainstream media outlets. Another thing that I do here is give guests a platform to speak freely. You're not gonna see me censor anybody. Please join us, won't you? Weeknights right here on Beck TV and online at beck.news. Cheers. Welcome back to Ladies of Another View on Back, and we are once again joined by Bill Sorensen. He's going to stay with us for the whole show. Um, so, yeah, you don't want to miss any of it. And we really appreciated having Virgil Hill on. Thank fun. you for that connection. That was, that was fun for me. I, I love the guy, and so it's fun to, to reconnect with him anytime. It's, like during the break, we were talking about, uh, or you had suggested that we need to get him into the North Dakota Hall of Fame. If there's anybody that deserves being in that Hall of Fame, it's Virgil Hill. I, I said, I, I know of no one in my life that's gone out of their way to promote North Dakota like Virgil Hill has. And, uh, and, and we were all over the world, and every place we went, the first thing he would do was be thankful that he was from North Dakota. 
and, and develop the work ethic that he developed and, and uh, those things and say all kinds of good things about North Dakota and Medora, uh, that he, the spot that he, lo he and I both uh, have a love for. And yeah, he just, he's just been a real ambassador to the state. And so I think he's deserving of getting that recognition. And hasn't he been working with kids? You were telling us on oh, the break yeah, about yeah. the kids. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, he's, you know, he, he, he recognizes that one of the, uh, Virgil got me teary-eyed. I know. Uh, <laughs> don't tell him that, though. No, no. 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 He'll no, never see this. He'll, never, right? he'll yep. never see it. Right, perfect. <laughs> um, yeah, he, he's working a lot with some Native American groups now, and uh, he's actually working on a program that would allow some Native Americans to automatically qualify for the Olympic trials uh, through, through, through games across the United States and a very worthy cause that he's spending a lot of time on when we're working. You know, there's a good shot that that might happen, but he's, he's also just has recognized because of his own life that um, sports and being involved in sports can get you on a good path and, uh, in life. And so he's trying to do some other things that organize activities for people, uh, uh, especially some Native American kids. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, wonderful. excellent. What a, what a match you two made, a, a made in heaven partnership. Well, I, I don't know. Uh, there were times that, you know, as I said, he put a lot of confidence in me that was not warranted uh, at the time. And, uh, but we had a fun ride. It we, seems we like fun. that confidence spurred you on. Like he believed in you and you're like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll, you it, know. I said the, the story that I just told about the, that I said, I told him, he said, okay, I'm going to retire. I'm going to announce my retire. Call, you know, would you call a press conference so I can announce my retirement uh, if you're not going to manage me? And I said, okay, I'll manage one fight. I'll do one, I'll put one event, well, you gotta do it again while you're still in the rankings. This is right after he'd lost to Tommy Hearns. And so after that, after that first fight, I said, he's, he's, he's so smart politically and things, because he's standing there in the ring, they're holding his hand up like this in the ring, and I'm standing in the corner, and he's got his arm like this, just, just do one more, just one more. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. so, I nod, I, so I nodded and said I'd do one more, and that was the first of 14 more years of, wow. <laughs> of doing wow. Virgil Hill stuff. Wow, that <laughs> That's is amazing. Cool. And, and I know before the show you said, hey, Virgil, you coming to Medora? Because um, that's a favorite place of his, right? We, he, he was there, came out to see me last year, and we spent, the, he and Deneen spent three days there, and I said, I, I, we laughed so much and had so much fun doing kind of what we just did there and reminiscing about some of the, the different negotiations with <laughs> Some of the, you know, you, no, no offense to all the people in boxing, but some of the people that are involved in that sport are not the most honorable people in the world. That might be a surprise. <laughs> yeah, what a shocker. Huh? Yeah, what a shocker. Uh, but yeah, you guys I guess cleaned so it, it up a bit, right? It, it, was, it was an interesting ride. It was an interesting ride. Well, speaking of Medora being one of Virgil's favorite places, you, come on, you're Mr. Medora. How did you, you do a magic show there? You've been in the musical. When did it all start? Uh, that's my happy place. Well. You know, if I tell you when I started, you're not going to believe it, because I started, my first show in Medora was in 1976. And I know you're thinking, well, you're way too young for that. Oh, first thought, yep. First thought? Nice answer. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, w I was out there uh, for the Bicentennial Review in 1976. And at that time, they sold the Medora musical tickets the day of the show in the Rough Rider Hotel. And I'd been there couple times and saw all the long lines of people that were there at noon to get their tickets. And I thought, hmm, an afternoon show would be a good idea. And so uh, I talked to Rod Jaden, who had ended up being a, a good friend of mine, and we uh, got a little grant to redo a theater there. And uh, did a show, was out there for the whole summer in 1976, doing a Bicentennial Review with Trish Lanahan. And uh, the place got its hook in me. When, I, when they said goodbye at the end of the year, I said, you don't understand, I'm coming back. <laughs> 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 it won't be the last. I had no idea that I'd end up being a big part of my life as it is. But, uh, it was, How many years has it been then, since well, 1976? Done, yeah, pretty. I, I took kind of a one year off, to be quite honest. But, yeah, no, I've done shows in Medora straight through now for 43 years. Amazing. And you do magic tricks. You're very do, well known for that. I do do a little magic in the show. And I'm one of those kids that had that as a hobby when I was young. I just never grew up, and so I, I still, uh, still do it and enjoy it. Are you self-taught your magic? Well, there weren't a lot of magicians around North Dakota, so yeah. um, it was one of the things you had talked about uh, earlier about my dyslexia. Uh, that 
asked about the, asking some questions about that. And, and to be honest, magic was one of the big things that helped me at that time because I did not read well. Uh, and, uh, but I wanted to learn magic tricks. And the only way you could learn magic tricks was through books back in those. It was before videos and the internet and things. So I started getting my little books and, and started uh, fighting my way through a lot of different magic books and practicing my, my tricks. And it was, a, I think, a big part of, of uh, what helped me catch up a little bit. So that must have been very difficult for you because back then, not a lot was known about dyslexia, right? Did you know that was the no, problem? No, no, no. I, and yeah, I, I just thought I was dumb <laughs> you know, at the time because uh, I knew I was behind in my reading skills. And, and uh, I, I was embarrassed, very embarrassed by it all the way through. You know, Even when I got good grades in college, I hated to talk about my younger years. My sister, my oldest sister, Marilyn, Marilyn Johnson, who was a teacher here in Bismarck for a lot of Yeah, I know her very well. She, yeah. she taught one of our kids. Did she? You, yes. Then your kid was very lucky. Yes, he yeah. was. Absolutely. <laughs> she, was, she was a great teacher, but she was getting her education training, and she came home, and I must have been in seventh grade at the time, and she came home and announced Bill's dyslexic um, wow. from some classes that she took and so I, you know, that's when I first discovered that I, uh, that it's really weird though for anybody that might have it. My, my mom, at the time uh, that she passed away, left a box of things for all the kids. And uh, one of the things that she left is a, is a paper that I wrote in third grade when I'm printing. And I looked at it now and I went, oh my goodness. Uh, it's amazing because the first line is all printed, but half the letters are reversed, but I write left to right. The next sentence, I'll write right to left. I'll start the sentence on this side of the paper oh. and write it this way with some of the letters still reversed. The next one's this way, and the next one's this way. And I'm going, what in the world was that about? I mean, what, is, uh, what, was, uh, what was happening dur during that time? But Yeah, I was very fortunate that I had some teachers that cared. And, um, yeah. and you had your sister, Marilyn. Sister. She is one of the best teachers. Isn't she, she amazing? amazing, yeah. yes. Yeah. My, my story of my sister, Marilyn, is that I... I she used to have an open house on New Year's Day when she'd make all kinds of soup. She's a great cook and, and uh, having this open house. And I would go to her house, grab my bo first bowl of soup, and uh, grab her box of Christmas cards and a box of Kleenex. Let's say, I have it here because I knew you were going to start reading these cards and there were going to be cards that say, it's been 26 years since I had you as my third grade teacher. You're still the most important person in my life. And, uh. Uh, and she'd get one after another like that. She was one of those kind of teachers, so pretty cool. Yeah. Our oldest, Erin Hatter, just loved her. What an amazing woman. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Now, do we have time for a magic trick, or? We only have a minute. Oh. Okay. So maybe on well, the next segment. Next we can... segment, we'll okay, come back. I'll get some, You're going to have a magic some, trick I need to us, practice right? anyway, so that's good. <laughs> you need to practice, yeah. yeah. How you know, many we... magic tricks do you know? A couple oh, hundred? Yeah, I'd hate to tell you that. I've got, I've got thousands of uh, different Two that I do well, but thousands of <laughs> Yeah, well, it's amazing that you're self-taught then, right? Did you ever go to any classes or you school? You know, I was very fortunate that once I developed a little bit of skills, I, I, I've had the opportunity to, to lecture at a lot of magic conventions around the country. And, uh, and that's, so I, I got a lot more out of going to those conventions than anything that I gave, but it's been a fun part of my life as well. I've enjoyed that. All right, well, we're going to talk about your life in politics, and I hope <gasps> we're going to get a magic trick when we come back. Okay. Right after these messages with Ladies of Another View on back. Sounds good. Since opening in Hebron in 1940, Dakota Community Bank and Trust has been your hometown bank. Our mission has been to provide modern banking convenience with old-fashioned hometown service. We've grown with the communities we serve. Through year-round events, countless sponsorships, and nearly 7,000 hours of volunteering each year. Learn more about our 80-year history at dakotacommunitybank.com. Hop in the rig and go down the road with me. We'll cover local and national stories that impact you. Down the road with Joel Heitkamp weekdays at 5.30 Central on Beck News and online at Beck.News.
respect, innovation, trust, and excellence. These core values can be seen in every building built by Straightway Construction. In the community for over 15 years, Straightway Construction has become the premier construction company for commercial projects. From dirt to design and framing to finish, Straightway Construction is your number one choice. You won't have to look far to find a project that has that Straightway touch. Call them today or go online to straightwayconstruction.com and let them make your vision a reality. Jeez, what a mess. Look at that. There's roof stuff everywhere. It's so embarrassing. Ruins the neighborhood. Come on, humans. Let's get this fixed. Don't let your roof go to the dogs. Call America's best contractors for your free estimate. Need a new woof? After checking with the rest, go with the best. America's Best Contractors, 258-2412. Online at americasbestcontractorsincorporated.com. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, inventor of MyPillow. Thanks to your support, you've helped make MyPillow become one of the fastest growing companies in America. Over the last 12 years, you've helped MyPillow create thousands of jobs right here in the USA. When I got MyPillow, I'm asleep almost immediately. I stay asleep at night and I wake up more well rested in the morning. That's why I invented my pillow. My patented fill adjusts to your exact individual needs and helps keep your neck supported and aligned. I'm interrupting this commercial right now. Retailers have canceled my pillow. And to thank you for your support, I'm going to pass the savings directly on to you. Go to MyPillow.com right now to get deep discounts on all my pillow products. For example, you can get my premium my pillows regularly $69.98, now just $29.98, the lowest price ever. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. Welcome back to Ladies of Another View on Back, and we're going to get to that magic trick, but we're going to hold that thought just for a minute. I want to get serious for a uh -oh. moment. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Okay, me... Bill can get serious, believe this it or is, not. This is, this is odd, but well, let's try I mean, try come on. Uh, you were a mayor, city commissioner. You had to get serious once in a while, right? I loved, I loved that job. I loved being mayor. You love everything. Well, I, was, I was very fortunate to have that job, because I, I said even in the most controversial meetings, I couldn't wait. I really... I really that's really true. I mean, I just, I just loved, I loved that job. Three terms, and there were some serious things that we had. Yeah, we had. Was some, there a flood? During, we had a flood. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we did. I remember that. And yeah. you're, you're such a comedian, and you're so lighthearted. But you had to take care of some serious stuff. There was, there was some. Yeah, we made to make, had to make some quick decisions in, at different times regarding that. So yeah, good experience. You also refer to your time as living on borrowed time. Can you talk a little bit about that? I've been, I've been very blessed in that uh, I've had some heart issues and, uh, that have caused me to have several heart surgeries. And, and as recently as last summer, my heart stopped several times. Uh, but I have a little defibrillator that kicked in and brings me back. But yeah, well back in, uh, actually back in 19, or 2008, I had seven bypasses. And at that time, my, my level of heart failure, they said I'd probably have a 20% chance of two year survival. And, uh, and then obviously blew past that. And uh, then I had a little cancer that was a stage four cancer that they thought would get me as well. And I'm cancer free. So uh, yeah, every day is a great one. Everyone's a, everyone's a good one. And I, uh, I have enjoyed it and I'm having good health now. I had a little more heart surgery last fall and, and very blessed, very fortunate. Is that the one year you took off from Adora was for the cancer? Yes. Well, I didn't take the whole thing off. I did the gospel brunch on weekends. So I, I had five days of radiation and things during the week. And then I'd head out to Medora and was still able to do the gospel brunch during that time. You did the last, um, you co-hosted or you hosted the yeah. Medora musical in 2019, right? Was that your last year? My last year, year. yeah. Mm -hmm. But you're still doing the magic show, and I want audiences to know that you're out there this summer. I am loving it out there. I get to do the gospel brunch, which is unbelievable how that's grown. I mean, the, our little gospel brunch sells out all the time. So yeah. where's that at? It's in the what's called the show hall right downtown mm -hmm. Medora. It's got a great brunch, and then the, the musical talent is unbelievable that's in that show. And uh, so, yeah, it's just grown and grown and grown in popularity. So it's now, now it's the hardest ticket in town wow. know, to get. So. And when is your magic show? When can people come to see that? The magic show is on weekends. I do a 
they're, they're nice enough to let me, there's another guy that does a magic show there uh, who's been mentored for a lot of years. His dad and I started this thing called Perception, the slanted house that's out in Medora. I don't know if you've seen that. Um, it's fun, go, go see it. It's kind, of a, it's kind of a different experience too. But his dad uh, and I started that and, and this, his son had an interest in magic. His name is Colin. And so he does a show four days uh, a week, five days a week now. And, uh, and he's, since he's been, was 11 years old, he's 20 now, since he's about 11, he's gone with me to magic conventions around the country. And uh, he now, <laughs> he now, I ask him, how do you do that? Oh, wow. He's, he's, he's got his uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of hours in at practice, and he's big time good. And so uh, go see him. He's, he's there uh, on five days a week, and I, I do my little thing at 1.30 on Saturday and Sunday. for now. Okay, 1.30 Saturday and Sunday. You don't yep. want to miss it. I remember we came so many years to see you, and sometimes you had... Milo Hudson Bueller oh with you, you two were team. Oh my gosh, that was fun. I want, I'm going to put up some pictures and you can uh -oh. talk when we look uh -oh. at the pictures up on you the got, You're full of all kinds of surprises oh, here, wow. aren't you today? <laughs> you I'm just were so many years. Talk to virtual. You oh. actually set your hair on fire once. I don't know if it was at Medora, but somewhere you, something lit you know, on fire. You know. So yeah. was this during the musical that's, right here? That's the thing during the musical. I don't remember what year that was. <clears throat> but I didn't start my hair on fire with that. I started my hair on fire juggling some torches. And I think my daughter loves to tell that story. So, And to tell you how vain I am, I was doing this thing. I forgot to shake all the fluid off the torches, and I started, and so some of the fluid flew off and got in my hair. And people are going, ah, and I'm thinking, I must be really good. <laughs> <laughs> Did they think it was part of the act? They thought it was part of the act. Nobody said anything. And the funny thing about it is I could actually smell, even though you got kerosene in these torches, I could smell my hair burning before I felt it. Oh, my goodness. I was like, what? And oh, my gosh. And all of a sudden, I started to feel it. And I, I burned off my eyebrows and burned all my yeah, Oh, was, my goodness. It was, not, it was not good. It was not good. But did the show go on? The show must go on. <laughs> and back then, without litigation, too, mind you, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't do the torches anymore. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that could have been pretty serious. Uh, yes, I was lucky. Um, yeah, so what is one of your fondest memories of Medora? I know you have a lot of them, but what are maybe a couple favorites? Wow, uh, the, you know, doing shows with Clyde Bauman. You mentioned, yeah. you know, he, yeah, I, in fact, I want to go full circle. I told him that I'd, I'd like to go do a, the, we did a show called The Forum Review, which we did a couple thousand shows together. And, uh, you know, he does this Milo Hudson Bueller character, which is this, the dumb far boy character, but he's a genius. I mean, he's very, very smart guy. And, uh, and we just had a lot of fun doing shows. He, he wrote Bill's Rules one time, Bill's Rules for the Forum Review. And uh, the first rule was every show will start promptly at four minutes beyond its assigned time. And rule number two was rehearsal is for wimps. Because I'd, I'd always say, he'd say, we're, we're going to practice this? I said, no, let's just go do it. And so uh, he would always shake his head at that. And, but his uh, third rule was if either guy messes up, it's fair game. And so we would quite often just, I mean, we, we one show won 18 minutes, I think, totally off script. Just fun. Just you did that sometimes with Medora Musical, I heard. Oh, yeah, too. well, like, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah I kind of had that reputation. Uh, did you drive the directors crazy? You know, like, oh my gosh, what is he doing? <laughs> I said, my friend, my friend and neighbor, now that Rolf Sletten and Emily Walter live next door to me, and Emily, and so they're Bismarck people part of the year. And, and um, and Emily was the co-host of the musical with me for a while. And Emily is like Miss Perfection. I mean, every hair is in place. She hits every note. If she's supposed to stand there, that's where she stands. And she'd say, you know, working with Bill is like every night, it's like, where's Waldo? I turn to deliver my line, and he's over in the corner, oh. you know, over, over here because something happened over there. And, you know, <laughs> I, 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 and, and when anything, like, and Chet would say, uh, anytime anything went wrong, they'd go, <laughs> you know, go do that, which which was kind of my, the fun part of the show for me was doing it with the things that happen and doing live shows. I bet you were quick on your feet though. Like when I we talked on the phone yesterday, and I said, Bill, I think this is going to be a lot of fun, and you said we're going to make it a lot of fun. Uh, you know, life's meant to be fun. We're meant to be joyful, so I I uh, I, I try to have a little joy in everything that I do. Were you a class clown as a kid? You know, maybe a little bit too much. Let's talk about something else. 
<laughs> no, I, I, you know, I think not only you talked about it, my dyslexia. I think I was a little ADHD before they, they diagnosed oh, that gosh. as well. So, so you had I, it all. I, I'm sure the teachers just said, "I've got Bill Sorensen this year." I'm sure that was, uh, I'm sure it was uh, the trade-off that they tried to make. You year. know, but a lot of those kids are the most successful kids now. Those that had to fight through their fight their way through school and maybe weren't the best liked by the teachers because they didn't fit into a box. Some of those kids are the brightest and most brilliant adults today. Well, well I, was, I was fortunate because I had some teachers that cared a lot and, uh, and made sure that I did. Right. You know, that they didn't uh, just let me fall by the wayside and things. So I, uh, I, was, I was very fortunate all the way through college that, uh, that I had those, those people in my life. And you had to navigate a lot of difficulties. Nobody knew why Bill couldn't read, but for some reason you struggled. Um, and I thought, I, I wonder if that's where it all started, your sense of humor and landing on your feet? Could be. I mean, I'm, I'm sure that was a part of it. Uh, you know, you, if, you, if you're failing in one area, you try to find something else that gets you accepted, you know, so I, I was probably... And magic that. tricks. I bet and kids magic loved tricks. your magic tricks. That, that was always always fun, and I st and I would, you know I did do magic back when I was in junior high and things. I started uh, having having that interest, so yeah, it's always been fun. Well, I keep teasing the magic tricks, and I decided we usually go to the lighter side, and I thought that might be a good place to put your magic trick. So okay. stay tuned. We're going to be right back with ladies of another view. I'm back. Fun well, times. Gone. Respect, innovation, trust, and excellence. These core values can be seen in every building built by Straightway Construction. In the community for over 15 years, Straightway Construction has become the premier construction company for commercial projects. From dirt to design and framing to finish, Straightway Construction is your number one choice. You won't have to look far to find a project that has that Straightway touch. Call them today or go online to straightwayconstruction.com and let them make your vision a reality. Deciding how to promote your business can be hard. Visit the professionals at Dakota Promotions and Printing and let them help you through your struggle. Dakota Promotions provides promotional items and apparel from corporate gifts to team shirts and everything in between. With quick turnaround times and friendly service, they are your best choice. And best yet, you're shopping local. Visit them online at dakotapromo.com or stop in their showroom at 320 West Main in Mandan. Dakota Promotions, delivering promotions just for you. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and as you know, my passion is to help each and every one of you get the best sleep of your life. That's why I created my new Giza Dreams bed sheets. The first night you sleep on my sheets, you'll never want to sleep on anything else. Go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen right now to get your very own MyPillow Giza Dream sheets. When you buy one set of sheets, you'll get another set absolutely free. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. Every great pizza has a secret. At New York To Go, that secret lies in our perfectly recreated New York water, the key ingredient to making our signature New York-style pizza. We also feature gyros with the region's only gyro meat spit, plus Nathan's hot dogs, calzones, and our delicious jumbo buffalo wings. Try a 14-inch or our special giant 20-inch pizza tonight. You gotta know how to fold them if you wanna hold them. New York To Go, we deliver for you. Forty years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. I'm Rick Becker from No Apologies. Welcome to your After Hours Oasis of Sanity. Watch us weeknights at 9 Central on Beck News and online at beck.news. Could you do us a favor? Beck TV is a finalist for Best Local TV Station in the Bismarck Tribune's Best of the Best. Vote now through August 9th by text or online. Vote for your leader in local, Beck TV. Welcome back to Ladies of Another View on Back, and we are already through most of the show. We're here 
for the lighter side, but I want to remind viewers to vote for back for best of the best in TV. Absolutely. Oh. Just text it. It's that easy. You just text a number. It's 699. You just dial the number 701-369-9464 and then text 699 and boom, that's all. That's all you need to do. Or scan. I'm not a real good scanner, but that's <laughs> yeah, way to yeah. do it. But if you know how to scan, you can do that too. Um, yeah, we're kind of old school, right? We like to dial. <laughs> press, press the buttons. And um, Bill, we've been We've been teasing this magic trick that Bill's going to show us. Well, what have you got? I, I, I've got to, I'll show you a trick. You know, you've been talking about my careers. I tell people, I tell people in my show on Medora that you know, I'm, I'm a magician, a politician, a boxing promoter, and a salesman. Okay. So if you can't trust me, who can you trust? Right? <laughs> right. <laughs> but some people actually cheat at cards. and I. Of course, I would not be one of those guys, but I'm going to show you what they do to actually cheat. You can see these cards. It's important that these cards are actually marked, and I'm going to show you the marks on the cards. Uh, oh, yeah, there they are. So it's important when you're doing this that you can read the marks just like this when you're going through the cards at regular speed that guys, guys can read the marks. From this side, we just have the, the queens, queen of diamonds. See that? I get it right up a little bit. Queen of diamonds, queen of clubs, queen of hearts, queen of spades. But if you can read the marks, for instance, I want just the queen of diamonds to be face up. I can just get just the queen of diamonds to be face up. Just because I can read marks on the back of the cards. If I want the queen of clubs, I can get just the queen of clubs to be face up. If I want the, uh, let's see, queen of hearts, it's the queen of hearts face up. Oh my gosh. If I want just the queen of spades, this should be the queen of spades. Now I'm going to show you the marks, but don't go telling everybody. But these are what the marks look like. See this one? This is the queen of diamonds. Oh my goodness. This is the queen of clubs. This is the queen of hearts. This is the queen of spades. <sighs> so don't tell everybody that I showed you how the trick worked. Wow. I am secret. like, I'm sitting right secret. beside We're sitting. you. Yeah. And it's like, it's, I, not, it's not lights. There's <laughs> nothing fancy oh. going on. And we don't know how you did that. I cheat. Oh my gosh. You want to play pinnacle? Yeah. You want to <laughs> yeah, play poker? <laughs> Oh, wow. What about, um, can you give us a trick where you can help people understand sure. how it works? Sure. Uh, that's why I had you hold this. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna have these guys zoom in on this hand right here, and, and I'm going to show you this, if they can get that. Wait, I don't know if no. you're on. Get, on. get on the screen. Oh, there, there we go. Oh, nicely done, guys. Okay, so if I put this between my two f fingers just like this, if I just take the little hand go like this, make it disappear, make it oh come back. God. Okay, come on. Okay. Wow. Now, if I show you that from behind. So this is something that I read as a young boy. I, it was one of those things I read about how to do the trick, you know, and I thought, that's not possible. That doesn't work. And then I saw somebody do it, and so it's like anything else. You just have to practice. But if you look at it from behind, the trick, so if, you were, if I were showing it to somebody on this side, this is what you'd see. This is the sleight of hand that's involved in it. It's kind of fun to watch it from either side. So I go like this. This is what I do. See where it is? I go like this. Oh. Like no, this. I don't. Oh, there it is. Look at it. Wow. Wow. That's, uh, that's uh, the first book I read, you can still get today, Mickey Mouse's Book of Magic. And I can't remember if that trick is in there, but it was one of the early books I read that I said, that's the stupidest thing I've ever seen. Like anything else in life, you practice uh, and spend some time at it. You know, wow. You can, you can and the key is going fast, right? The yeah. practice. Well, there's, there's, there's several principles that are involved in that. One is, one is speed. One of them is, is misdirection. Um, if I were to take something, we still have a couple minutes here. I'll show them this just from the side, but if I take a, there we go. If I do it from over here, if I, if I put these two things in there, this, these are two principles involved, speed and misdirection. Okay? What? Let me do it again. <laughs> So if I put the two balls. Oh my gosh. Uh, and so what, I'm, what you do is you direct their attention. Part, part of it is just called retention of vision because your vision will retain something. Part of it is because you're conditioned to see something. If you see somebody put a ball into that hand, you, you, you think that's what they did, even if that's not what they did. Um, but it is what you did. Well, it is what you think I did, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, I, it's what I'm thinking. Uh, uh, and so, yeah, that's kind of the, some of the principles of magic. Fun hobby. 
I invite the kids, kids to, uh, if, you, uh, if you haven't found your niche yet, go try that one because it's a very fun, it's been a very fun ride for me in my life to, uh, to uh, have been able to do that. I've had, you know, it's crazy when you get to be this old. I've actually, in addition to Medora, so I've done like 5,000 plus shows. And 2,500 of them have been across the country in 38 states. I think I've done shows. Uh, you know, who, I mean, who, who would have ever thought from a little hobby that you'd, you know, you'd do a little bit that you'd have that be a big part of your life and a big part of what I enjoy doing and a big part that brings joy to me. And we haven't even yeah. talked about that. So you had a cross-country tour with your magic show, right? And we have one minute. So. Oh, I, I do. I, I you know I do a ma I do a Christmas tour uh, every year for Medora, and. Uh, it's really grown and been great fun. We do four states, okay. and this year we're going to do 31 shows in 27 wow. days, I think. And so go to Medora.com to learn mm -hmm. more about that and yeah. see what's going on this summer. And we'll be talking about the Christmas tour, too, so coming up, right? I can't wait. Um, I can't wait. Thank you so much, Bill, for joining us. Thank you. It was it's great fun. Thanks for having fun. Virgil on. That was fun for me. Oh, it was. <laughs> when was the last time you've seen him? I saw him last summer. Was last time. We've, we've talked several times since then, but I, I haven't seen him since uh, last August, I guess. I felt we got to eavesdrop on two, two old friends talking and joking <laughs> yeah, with each yeah. other. That was a lot of fun. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Um, and coming up next is Joel Highcamp, Down the Road with Joel. And we'll be back tomorrow with Ladies of Another View. I'm back. Thanks a lot, Bill. Thank you. It's my, fun, my pleasure. Very fun. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, inventor of my pillow. Just like you, I had problems sleeping. I tried every pillow out there and nothing worked. 15 years ago, I invented my pillow. It took me two years to develop because I wanted to have everything you would ever want in a pillow. I made sure that you could adjust my patented fill so you could have the exact support you need as an individual regardless of your sleep position. I also wanted a pillow that would last, so I made my pillow machine washable and dryable. I back my pillow with a 10-year warranty and a 60-day money-back guarantee. Not only that, I do all my own manufacturing in my home state of Minnesota. I really like the fact that it was made in the USA. I think that USA products are a better quality product. I've tried a lot of other pillows and nothing's worked like my pillow. I'm interrupting this commercial right now. Retailers have canceled my pillow. And to thank you for your support, I'm gonna pass the savings directly on to you. For example, you get my six piece towel sets, regular $109.99, now only $44.98 or my pillow dog beds for as low as $19.99 with your promo code. I used to think that sheets were just sheets. I got the Giza Dream sheets. They are the most comfortable sheets I've ever had. The Go Anywhere pillow is so easy to just roll up and take anywhere I want to go. Go Anywhere pillow is really comfortable, so that's what I really like. It's nice and supportive and it's nice and small. The My Pillow Topper for the first time has enabled me to have a cool night's sleep. I'm able to go to bed and just get rest. That's three inches of wonderful that's in the MyPillow mattress topper. It's just like a firm cloud. MyPillow helps me get a good night's sleep so I can do my job in the morning. Go to MyPillow.com to get deep discounts, not just on my pillows, but so much more. For example, you get my six-piece towel sets, regular $109.99, now only $44.98, or my pillow dog beds for as low as $19.99 with your promo code. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com.